It's the end of the session. We're here with Tosh, who is, uh, I forgot the name of the dog. It's, it's, it's considered a Mexican hairless dog, clearly not hairless. Uh, but uh, this is Tosh, this is Bear, and this is Conan, and this is their roadmap to success. Now, uh, in this session, the Guardian, I was telling her off camera, she probably gets her dogs, I would say she's in the top five percentile of my clients. Most of my clients ask them how much exercise they get their dog, and they answer, they always say, and this client said the same thing, not enough. But when I probed, she takes these dogs, each one of them, on three walks a day. She's got three dogs, so she has to walk, and they don't get along, all, uh, or they're not great at walk, sit. So she walks them separately. So she probably spends two hours a day walking her dogs, which I wish more of my clients would, because exercise is really important. Now, I started off the session by going over creative ways to burn some excess energy. We have a nice stairway right here. Um, and so one of the things I, uh, that people don't consider is this could be like a doggy stairmaster. Go to the top of the stairs, pull out one tree, and do this with one dog at a time at first. Put the other two dogs away, touch the treat to the dog's nose, and then throw it so it lands down here. When the dog comes down and gets it, as soon as it gets it, make say their name or a kissing sound or something, get her, and then make the dog come back to you and give it another treat and say a word. Maybe that says stare master. And then throw another one. Now the first time you do it with each dog, I would have you do it until the dog stops coming back. So, and count the number of up downs. Each up down it'd be one. And then count until the dog stops doing it. Maybe uh, maybe Kona's is, she goes 19 and Bear goes 15. So you now know the maximum. And then basically if the guardian sit, if the guardian has some company coming over and she doesn't have time to walk them, there we go, sit, um, she can go over and spend a little bit of time doing the up-downs or doing the up-downs before a walk. Most people don't consider that, but that makes it, that's a really big, uh, that really helps. Um, uh, they don't, they're not huge laser dogs, but the guardian might also want to do scent games. I also talked to her about starting a, a journal, an exercise journal, and maybe uh, you know for different, especially for walking. But you write down the date, uh, or the, the day at the top, and three columns for the, each dog, and then write down the time, how long the walk is, how many up downs, how many fetches, or whatever it was. And then at the end, and then at the end of the day, you could maybe have two grades. One one grade is the overall behavior for the day. One grade was the behavior for the walks. And start figuring out, you know, maybe maybe the dog, maybe Kona needs uh, eight up downs before we go for a walk, and then the walks are a lot easier. Now, we have the video above this which talks about a lot of tricks for the walk. I can't remember if I've said this, but, well, I didn't say this one. Um, sometimes what I do is I start the walk for the first block as I have a bunch of treats. I take no more than five steps before every break. And then during each break, I stop and I tell the dog to sit, give it the treat for sitting, and then take up to five more steps, stop again, give the dog another treat for sitting. So now, by the time we actually start our walk, the dog has gotten five or 10 or 15 treats, and every time you stop, they start stopping automatically. And now the dog is paying attention to you as opposed to paying everything, attention to everything else. This is not gonna teach your dog to heal, but it will give them to pay more attention to you, be a little bit more focused. Also, uh, the other things I talked about in the video, making sure they're calm and all that stuff are equally important. Uh, all right, so that's the exercise. Uh, the Guardian didn't, they had, uh, this, these Guardians actually had quite a few rules as well, which is also something my clients usually tell me they don't have any. So I went through a couple others, like making the dog sit before you open the door, making, uh, and I went through breaking down the steps of opening the door into individual steps and helping the dog practice doing that. The more that we do that, the more the dog's gonna be comfortable and be able to relax and not keyed up and ready to run up and down the stairs or run up in and out the door, already on the next uh, thought. Um, these dogs like to run up and down the stairs, so the guardian might wanna tell the dogs to have one dog at a time. Again, put Kona here, Say wait, and then start walking up the stairs backwards. Remember, your authority goes whatever direction your belly button is pointing. So walk all the way up the stairs. If she stays seated, then say come, or whatever the command is, and when she comes up, give her the treat, and then say whatever the command is. You might come up with a command that means upstairs and downstairs, or you could just use come. But the dogs like to race up and down the stairs, or they're, they're both herding breeds, and they actually run around her and almost nip at her to hurry up or go up or down. They might think this is dangerous. So a lot of this is we want the dogs to see that the human has things under control and their services of guard dogs or shepherd dogs are not needed in relation to the humans. So the more rules that we can enforce, uh, the better. Um, another great way to add a little bit of structure is adding structure to mealtime. Right now the guardian is feeding all three dogs at the same time, I believe, right? So I went through the importance of feeding the dog and her eating something first and then feeding the dogs one at a time. Even though she eats breakfast, she eats breakfast on the road and the dogs don't see her eating and that's a very primarily important activity. So I would feed, uh, feed Tosh first and when Tosh is eating, the other two dogs are out and then I believe Bear's next. Mm -hmm. And then when Bear's eating, the other two are not, not allowed in and then eventually uh, Conan. Now if they are, if Bear continues to eat, uh, accelerate his, his eating, they gotta start feeding him a small little, just uh, put a, little, a small handful in 
After you, and then wait, or make him sit and wait, and then give him permission to eat a little bit, and then wait, sit, and then add a little bit more, have him wait, and then, so you're just breaking in little breaks and helping him process it a little bit longer. Also, the dog's nails are really long. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can use a conditioned emotional response, or a CER, to help the dogs feel good about it. Most dogs hate having the nails trim. Now, Bear and Tosh both have black nails, which makes it really hard to see, but if your dog's nails get too long, they can actually split down the axis, and you have to amputate the nail, which is really uncomfortable. So what we want to, what we want to do is, I would get the dog used to the, the Dremel, is what I prefer to do. Now, first thing you want to do is cut down the nails as quick as you, as close as you can to the quick without making it too close because it'll pinch, it'll hurt, and it'll also if you go in the quick, it'll bleed. So what I would do, the first thing is I would do kind of a sweeping motion. So I'm going to offer one thing at a time. So if I have the Dremel in this hand, I'm going to have a bunch of treats in this hand. What I'm going to do is I show the dog the Dremel, it looks at it, and I drop a treat. So when I'm dropping the treat, I'm taking the Dremel away. And I do that about five to ten times with each dog, and then again do this separately. And eventually, after about five or ten times, I'm going to hold it here and hold and wait for the dog to touch it with his nose. Make sure you're flashing and holding it within about six feet and then six inches. And as soon as he does, take it away and drop a treat. So you do that until every time you show it, the dog comes over, and now you can start holding it seven or eight inches away the dog comes over to it. This is a bit of a touch me technique. Uh, so then once you get to the point where the dog will come and touch it wherever it is, we're break, what we're doing for this is we're breaking down the individual elements. A lot of times don't like having the nails drum, drum because it makes a sound, it makes a vibration, it makes a smell, and I don't like having my fingers touched. And so we're helping process this by little steps. So once you can do this and the dog touches like that, drop a treat. Um, then the next thing is I would have it behind my back, turn it on and give the dog a treat. And as soon as the dog gets right before they finish chewing it, turn the Dremel off. Maybe start off doing this with a low Dremel set. So now they're just hearing the sound of the Dremel while they're getting the treat at the same time. Uh, the next step is, after, and you might do that a couple, different dogs, different number of repetitions because they're getting comfortable with it. But they should be relaxed and not breathing heavy and, and, and anxious. Next step is I would actually uh, pick up the dog's nail, uh, foot, and I forgot about this when I talked about the couch. Pick up, uh, and you can have your partner actually with the treats. So maybe you do this with meal. So basically, uh, you give the dog uh, a piece of kibble, and then you pick up one of its paws and just isolate one digit, and then, and then let go, and then they get another one, and you just go through getting them used to you handling their fingers one at a time. And do it for all 10, uh, all 10 uh, finger, uh, you know what I'm saying, all digits and all the paws. Um, the next step is when we actually start doing it, make sure you exercise the dog properly ahead of time. Burn off a lot of excess energy so they don't have a lot of fight. I don't want to say fight because if you do it properly, they're not going to fight. And then basically when they're nice and relaxed, hold it up and then basically have somebody give them a piece of kibble, take the Dremel on and uh, 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 whatever setting you want, and then just go, zzz, just touch it for a second. <laughs> then give them another piece and do the next one. Another piece, the next one, the next one. So we're just getting them used to it. And eventually we can actually do a little bit more and a treat a little bit more. If you go soft and quietly and slowly, the dog will actually relax and let you give them a mani petty. And that's really helpful, like I said, if we have we go to the quick or the nails get too long, that can create a problem. All right, I also went over petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is refraining from petting the dogs when it demands attention through nudging, scratching, barking, pawing at you. Instead, uh, if you nudge me, I would say sit. She only did that because I said he, and she was a she. And then when she sits, I would pet her and say sit. Remember, always try to pet a dog under his chin whenever things are equal. You can pet the butt too, but just never pat on top of the head. And if I'm rewarding the dog, try to pet under the chin because that facilitates nose up, and that means the dog feels good and is proud about what they've done. Um, so if it's already sitting, ask her to come and sit over here or ask her to lay down. She has to do something to change her state to earn that affection from the human. After a while, what will happen is she will start coming and sitting in front of the human to prepay for attention. When she does that, make sure you do rewarding for that. And say just the command word, don't say good sit, just sit. And not sit, just sit. Um, speaking of that, I'd like the guardians to come up with a list of command words, the official command words. Most of us use 10 versions of the commands for each dog. Come, come here, over here. Dog's name, whistle, come here girl. Uh, nickname and tap my thigh and something else. Now if the dog knows 10 commands and each one has seven to 10 command words, I have to listen for 70 to 100 words out of the 2,000 to 11,000 words that people use every day. That's harder for them to listen that puts them in a position to fail. But if we always say come and exclusively come, it makes it easier for the dogs to understand. Um, so what I would recommend you guys do is if your partner is saying, come here, you're like vocabulary. And you're like, that's right, come. And that way we, get, we consolidate and get in a good habit of doing that. And come up with fun command words for new tricks that you teach them. 
these dogs are pretty in, pretty intelligent dogs. So I would look, go to YouTube and try to set a goal for like maybe a month or two. I'm going to teach you all the dogs a new trick once a week. So on Sunday, you take Kona by herself up to the den and you teach her how to bang your den. And I call that Capone. Come up with funny command words. And once she's learned that, then teach Bear and then teach uh, and teach the, uh, Tosh as much as you can. Um, and some things you'll be limited because he is losing his eyesight. Uh, or she is. She, right? Um, we didn't work with her as much. And so, uh, but now you have other ways to redirect the dog's attention and it helps boost their self-esteem. Kona was barking at the neighbor outside when we were doing the video when he came out to water his plants. And I think, again, she thinks she's in charge of security. The more the guardian enforces rules, pets with a purpose, and does passive training, as well as uh, teaches her new tricks and commands and adds more structure and delayed gratification, the more the dog's identify as being the follower as opposed to the leader. Um, let me see, uh, passive training is the last little part that I forgot to go over. Passive training is just recognizing the dog when it offers a behavior. If she comes over here on her own, come. I did not ask her to come. I did not entice her to come. I had no influence over that whatsoever, but she did come and that's the end result of a command that I'm looking for. So if every time she comes to you on command, uh, off command and you pet her and say the word come, then when you do use the command word, she is gonna be much more inclined to come. I say, well, I, my watch word for this is usually uh, recognize. So if somebody says recognize, I look at the dog, if she's standing, I would assume she came and just pet her and say come. Remember, you have three seconds to pet or correct your dog. So you gotta get to it right away, but a third of a second is more effective. Uh, the closer you get to the genesis of the behavior, the most effective it is. Uh, so basically, uh, we can help each other out by saying recognize if the dog does something we want, and we just start petting it. Paycheck means I suspect you maybe forgot to curve pet with birth. So if, if I'm petting the dog and the guardian comes in, she sees this, she might suspect that I forgot to ask Kona to sit. So she says, paycheck. I stop petting and say, sit. You can also use this hand motion. Then pet on the chin, say, sit. And I can say, actually, I asked the dog to sit before he came in. When you open the door, she stood up and I continue petting and David said, it's allowed. I'm David and I do say that's allowed. All right, uh, so that's passive training and petting with a purpose. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Practice leashing your dog up at times when you're not going to go for a walk. Any other activity that your dog is excited about, do the same thing. He got really excited when we first came in from, app, from the training that we did in the video above. He was whining and whimpering. I'm guessing that all the dogs are like this when the guardians come home. If you, any attention that you give the dog is actually validating and rewarding the dog for whatever it's doing at the time. So if you pet your dog, or even if you shove it off, you're rewarding the dog. So when you come in, act like they're not even there. Don't pay any attention to it. And if one of them, let's say the Kona relaxes, then I turn to engage with her. And when usually when you do that, the dog starts wiggling and gets up, stop. This is a dominance move, so I would definitely not pet when they do that. So they whimper, you just disengage. I call this light switch on, light switch off. So make sure you practice light switch on, light switch off. So if he SITs right now, I'm gonna give him a treat. Or excuse me, I'm gonna pet him, sit. That's passive training. I didn't ask him to, but he's still getting rewarded. And after a while, he will learn, and the other dogs will learn, how come I'm not getting petted? And suddenly she SITs, and now she's getting petted too. So when you come home, or any time that they're overexcited, act like they're not there. As soon as their energy calms, start reaching for them. As soon as they start wiggling, pull your arm back. Don't say no. Just continue doing what you're doing. Don't wait for them. And then after a while, the dogs will figure this out, and they will start sitting down and being calmer faster and faster. I'm not saying that we, the dogs can't have fun, but excited, crash is not necessarily happy. It's an unbalanced state of mind, and we want our dogs to practice being calm and balanced, because that's what we want to be, especially when we're performing or practicing or learning new skills. All right, um, any other, anything that I've forgotten to go over? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I think you covered it. I probably am forgetting a lot, because I cover a lot in three hours. <laughs> now, if you have questions, make sure you call or text me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, the number I called you from, program that in your phone. It's a 402 number. Mm -hmm. Program dog on problems, because I have this effect on all women. They forget my name as soon as I walk <laughs> out the door. But if you put in dog on problems, you'll be able to search for dog and it'll come up. Okay. I've had people call me seven years after I worked with them. Helped them with a five minute phone call, didn't need to come back out. Can okay. totally help them. Because the guardian has to walk these dogs a lot, uh, she doesn't have a yard, I'd like to set up a one-hour training session to work on the teaching the dogs to heal. Uh, the martingale collars, get the martingale. When you get the martingale, it's M-A-R-T-I-N-G-A-L-E. If you forget how to put the special twist leash, let me know, but get also four-foot straight leashes. No extra loops, no bells and whistles, just a straight four-foot leash, leash for each dog. Mm -hmm. And then the martingale, some of them have a clasp or a clip. I don't like getting the clips. I get them on Chewy. Uh, I find they're pretty cheap there. And get the ones like I have, that there's no clasp. The clasps often break at the worst possible time. Mm -hmm. Some of them also have the small loop as a chain. I prefer to get it as uh, fabric. 
and make sure that the leash that you have is not a round leash or a chain leash. It needs to be flat. It should probably be an inch width. Yeah, she's trying to get the treats in my pocket. Uh, she's a smarty pants. Uh, all right, Bear, is there anything else I forgot? I'm going to leave the treats here for you. All right, this is Bear. This is Kona, and Tosh is hiding out under the, under the table. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>